Hey all, today we are going to discuss about facial hemiatrophy, which is also known as Perry Romberg syndrome, as it was described by Perry, Hinock, and Romberg. Hence the name Perry Romberg syndrome. Now it is basically a slowly progressive atrophy of the soft tissues of the face. Basically half of the face, right? That's why the name facial hemiatrophy. Facial hemi, hemi means half and atrophy means wasting or lessening, right? Of the soft tissues and maybe of underlying structures such as bones and cartilage. So soft tissues such as skin, so you can see the wasting of or atrophy of skin, subcutaneous uh, fat and, and bones and cartilage also. As it is hemiatrophy, so half of the face and even the neck may be involved in facial hemiatrophy, right? It is accompanied by Jacksonian epilepsy. Trigeminal neuralgia and changes in eyes and hair will be seen in Perry Romberg syndrome. An important fact about facial hemiatrophy or Perry Romberg syndrome is there is a presence of anti nuclear antibodies in the serum of infected individual, which is suggestive of scleroderma because in scleroderma also anti nuclear antibodies are seen in the serum. So it is considered as a type of localized scleroderma, right? A type. Now the etiology part. Sir Wartenberg, Wartenberg suggests that Perry Romberg syndrome is due to disturbances in the cerebral tissue. So due to cerebral disturbances, Wartenberg suggested that the nerves, the sympathetic nervous system is not able to perform its normal functions, right? That's why facial hemiatrophy occurred, right? And the nerve that was involved was trigeminal neuralgia according to his, his studies, right? Trigeminal neural nerve. So, Wartenberg suggests that due to cerebral disturbances, facial hemiatrophy occurred. But there are also few reasons of uh, facial hemiatrophy such as extraction of teeth, local trauma, infection and genetic factors. Right? But the main reason was considered cerebral disturbances which was given by Wartenberg. Now the clinical features. Clinical features included painless cleft. Coup, coup de saber. We pronounce it as coup de saber, right? Which is also seen in scleroderma. Scleroderma. So, two things were seen in scleroderma, such as in anti nuclear antibodies and coup de saber. So, it basically demarcated the face from the normal skin. So there, it, it basically demarcated the face from normal skin, basically. Atro affected skin and normal skin was differentiated by or bounder, boundaried by coup de saber, right? These were the signs which were seen, early signs you can say early signs which were seen in facial hemiatrophy. Now bluish hue can be seen in these patients. As we know that this is facial hemiatrophy, so atrophy of the skin, bone, cartilage of the ipsilateral. Ipsilateral means of same side, right, um, were seen. Also salivary gland and ears were involved, right. Many other structures were involved such as tongue, Ear, larynx, esophagus, diaphragm, kidney, and etc. Right? It starts in the first decade 
and last for about three years. This is basically a self-limiting. After three years, it will stop. But the changes that are occurred will be permanent. Changes will be permanent. Right? Now, the neurological disorders were found in uh, facial hemiatrophy. Ocular findings such as enophthalmos was seen in facial hemiatrophy. One half of the body is affected rarely in uh, facial hemiatrophy. Pigmentation disorders were seen. Contralateral means of the opposite side. Trigeminal uh, neuralgia and Jacksonian epilepsy were seen, right? It occurs more frequently in women, 3 ratio 2. So, women were more affected than men. Slight predilection for the left side. So, left side was more uh, involved. You can say uh, slight predilection were there. was there, right? Atrophy appears to follow distribution of one of the more one or more divisions of trigeminal nerve, right? Now the oral manifestations. Oral manifestations include dental abnormalities, which include incomplete root formation, incomplete root formation, facial asymmetry, hemiatrophy of the lips and tongue, right? So these were the oral manifestations. Also, there was delayed eruption of teeth, right? Now, the differential diagnosis of um, peri syndrome. These were post-traumatic fat atrophy, facial microsomia, which is also known as Goldener syndrome, and partial lipodystrophy. The treatment, there is no specific treatment for peri syndrome. As it becomes quiescent, after a stage, right? 